Shalom, brothers and sisters. We start off this week's service by reading a scripture from the book of Isaiah. This is Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a young woman shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. By way of announcements, this is the giving season, and I would like to state that there's a lot of things going on in the fellowship right now, and Christine and I had a conversation last night, and we're at a point to where we feel that there's many people that are involved in the fellowship, whether that be in the background, just watching, or people participating for the past several years, uh, seven years, actually, since 2015, the majority of everything that we do at the fellowship has been paid for by myself. And now people are asking us to do more. They're asking us to travel. And that isn't a problem. We are going to do our best to, to travel. But we cannot afford the travel expense and to continue paying for everything that we're paying for for the fellowship. And so because of that, we've been transitioning for a while now to where the way we've been doing things is at first everything was out of just out of my own pocket and then it moved to as people donated then it would come from those funds and we were supposed to try to separate things out into what people want us to pay for but if we didn't have enough then it's like well this stuff has to get paid for particularly during covid when i was unemployed so we had to divert funds from one thing to another to ensure that the bills were paid the problem that we're coming into right now is we, we had a really nice spell where people were really generous. And then after COVID, the, those, those blessings stopped and things started coming from my pocket and Christine's pocket again. What we have decided is we cannot, we have a family. We can't keep being pulled in so many different directions. We have a way for people to give on the website and we're working on better ways to help people to do that. I know there's people who had struggles. They didn't understand that you click the button to give to go to uh, um, PayPal. So we're, we're doing the best that we can to try to fix things and, and make them as easy to use as possible. But I only have so much time in the day. So right now it's still donating. People can still donate through PayPal. I'm not looking for a paycheck. Please understand that. At the same time, I'm giving so much of my time and I've given so much of, my, of our financial resources that at this point, we do need your financial help. In the scriptures, it talks about giving anywhere from 10% to everything that you have. I was just reading this week, I believe it was yesterday, where the Lord was asking for one third of, of what you have. And that's in the Old Testament. And as I was reading that, I was praying on it. You know, the fellowship really isn't asking for that much. We have a brother that gives five $5 every single month. We have another brother that gives $20 every single month. We have other people that they give when they can. Uh, there's another sister that's giving uh, $5 a month also. So that, that they're, it's money that is definitely going to be there. The people who give intermittently, we really appreciate that. This announcement is a call to action. If you appreciate what we're doing, you know, I've asked you guys to like and share. At this point, I'm asking to please give. I'm not asking for 10%. I'm not asking for a third. I'm not asking for everything that you have. The Lord is asking you to please help provide financially. The Lord has asked for money for a temple, and a few people have, have helped with this. Unfortunately, not enough people are helping there in in the other areas and so money is getting pulled from the temple fund to cover expenses when i don't have the money to pay for it so if you are enjoying these videos if you do appreciate what we're doing if you feel the lord calling you to help in this work and you don't know how again we're not asking for a lot of money here if everyone that was involved in the fellowship just gave five dollars we would have enough to pay for travel expenses pay for the website pay for everything that we need We'd really like to start doing advertising to let people know that we exist. So we are asking you very prayerfully for your help. 
We've always said that tithe is between you and the Lord. If you feel that the Lord is telling you to give money to a homeless shelter or, or some charitable organization, that is your tithe. We are asking for, then, I guess, an offering. If you feel a need to pay a tithe to us, if this is where the Lord tells you to, to pay your tithe, we would very much appreciate your generosity. If not, we understand. We want you to follow the Lord. And so we're asking for a small donation just to help us move forward. And not everybody is going to give $5. So if you can give more, if you can give $20, if you can give $50, it would be very, very appreciated. <clears throat> Again, people are asking Christine and I and others to travel for a number of things. And we want to be able to meet these people's needs. And we don't want to charge these people. So we don't want to build barriers. And we also need to break down the financial walls that stop us from doing the things that we've been asked to do. I really hate asking for money, but that unfortunately is the world that we live in. So if you have the financial resources to give, we ask that you please do give to this cause so that we can move forward in Christ and do the things that the Lord has asked us to do and the things that our brothers and sisters here within the Latter-day Saint movement are asking us to do as well. As far as prayer requests, we have a brother who's had some really, really... He's had a really rough time with some um, medical issues. Please pray for him. He really could use your prayers. Some people have taken advantage of him. And some people, there's, there was some issues that happened while he was... I shouldn't say some people. A, a particular person took advantage of him. And some other people are... They, they were trying to help and it did not go according to plan. And so he is recovering from a number of, of things. And he could definitely use some prayers. There are many brothers and sisters that are sick, afflicted, suffering from financial difficulties. And so we ask that you please pray for them. There are a number of people that very recently have found out about the fellowship and gotten very, very upset because we don't belong to their church and we aren't joining their church. And I don't see these people as our enemies. I see them as our brothers and sisters. And so I, I ask that we collectively as a fellowship pray for these brothers and sisters that they can soften their hearts and accept all Latter-day Saints regardless of church, sect, or denomination. I understand that in this movement it's very difficult because since Joseph Smith died, I know, I know Joseph Smith with the Council of 50, my understanding is that he was trying to basically help people start new churches. There would be various branches that weren't going to be stakes, they were just going to be part of a collective of churches within the Latter-day Saint movement. Because by the time Joseph Smith died, there were at least five different Latter-day Saint churches, so it just made sense, or sects, I guess you want to, would say, since they're breakoff groups, it would just make sense to try to umbrella people together so they can know, hey, look, you can stay in your church, you can have your different beliefs, but our core message is still the same. Let's find the things that we have in common. I do believe that that's the direction that things would have moved into, that we would have moved into had Joseph Smith survived. Unfortunately, when he died, there was a huge power struggle, and that power struggle is still going on today. It's still low here and low there. So let's pray for these brothers and sisters that we can, even if we have theological differences, we can learn to love each other and work as one in Jesus Christ. Please pray for the, the spiritually homeless. We're trying to build a home here, so please pray for them that they can and will find a home, whether it be here or somewhere else, and also that those the Lord has called to come and take over these responsibilities of these Sabbath, yeah, these Sabbath worship services, that they will find their way here. That they will have the courage and conviction to accept their callings. I know it's hard. 
I didn't accept my calling right away. I received my first dream that was telling me that I was called to a ministry years before the fellowship was even thought of. The Lord had to prepare me, and it took time. So I understand that these things do take time. Let's pray for these brothers and sisters that in the Lord's time, they will come forward. Those suffering spiritual PTSD, let's pray for these brothers and sisters as well. And those that have found the fellowship, that have found hope in Christ, that have found another church sector denomination, whether in the Latter-day Saint movement or without, they've, they've found their path to God. Let's pray in thanksgiving for these brothers and sisters as well. Let's not forget about them. Let's focus on the positive and not merely the negative. So with that, let's take a moment to pause the video and say an opening prayer. If you'd like to, sing a hymn, and then we'll be here when you get back. And now as part of our unity portion of the service, I'm going to read the Shema. I'm going to read it in Hebrew first, and then I'm going to read it in English, and then I'm going to pause and let the video roll so that we can all say it together when this video airs or whenever it is that you're watching it, so that we can be one in Christ through the Shema. Shema Yisrael, Yavah Elohenu, Yavah Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yavah is our Elohim, Yavah is unity. This week marks the first week of Advent. Because I was raised in the Brighamite Church, a lot of these Christian holidays I'm, I'm not very familiar with. Christmas and Easter were really the only ones that were celebrated, that, that we share with our Protestant and Catholic brothers and sisters. So I'm not really the best person to talk about Advent. Um, I remember when Christine and I after we had left the Salt Lake City Church, we wanted a place where our children could worship, where they could learn about Jesus Christ in an open and caring environment and learn to accept all people. And there was a local community of Christ. So we decided we would check it out. Actually, interestingly enough, there were about five different churches we could have gone to within the Latter-day Saint movement where we were living. We just didn't know they were there. And I'm not sure if they're still there or not, because we moved, but we felt impressed by the Holy Spirit to check out Community of Christ, so that's what we did. When we got there, there was a, a small opening type service, and then the children were taken outside, and someone preached a sermon, and then the children came back. It, it's something that we were not unfamiliar with. We had been to other churches that, that had a similar format, what we weren't used to was the fact that it was Palm Sunday. And they actually talked about Palm Sunday. When the children came back, what they had done was, after learning about Christ entering Jerusalem, they had made these, these leaves, and they laid the leaves out, and they did a, a small dramatization of, of what it may have looked like. And I remember when we, when we left, Christine and I, we commented to each other our surprise with so much focus on Joseph Smith and the particular church itself that we belong to being the main focus of what we talked about every single week. We realized that our children were missing out and we had missed out in our youth growing up on a lot of, of Christian teachings about Jesus Christ. And so... Because of that, we've tried to do more with these things and look at the life of the Savior throughout the year with all the various holy days, Christian holy days and Jewish holy, day, holy days that exist. And Advent, growing up, I always thought it was just a way of selling cheese in you know, various Advent calendars. I didn't even realize that it was a, a thing. But what a blessing it is that we have an opportunity 
to focus on the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And yes, I know that there are a number of people that don't believe that December 25th was actually Jesus' birthday. I am one of them. But I will never, ever give up an opportunity to celebrate Jesus Christ. And so if this is the day that the world picks, I will celebrate with the world because Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And so I will, I will use this opportunity and I'll be grateful for it. So that said, what are we going to talk about on this first Sunday of Advent? I'm not going to go into what Advent is because I don't feel that I'm well versed enough to do so. But when I was looking up to see what people generally talked about on these Advent Sundays, this particular Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, the topics that are generally spoken about are the coming of Jesus Christ, both the first and the second. And reading over it, I felt very impressed by the Spirit to talk this, this Sabbath about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to be very clear here that what I'm going to be sharing with you are some of my own views and my own opinions. They don't necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the fellowship itself. My son last night asked me about Jesus. Now, he's still small. He's, he's eight. Actually, I'm sorry. He just turned nine. And we were talking about baptism. He, he goes back and forth. He really wants to be baptized, but then he also gets really scared about the idea of somebody holding him underwater. I mean, he's a child. That, that makes sense. So we've talked about going to the beach and baptizing him. At one point, we were even given permission to baptize him using the local Community of Christ baptismal font. And I do believe that when the time is right and, and the Lord is willing, he will be baptized. And in the meantime, he is protected by the grace of Jesus Christ. But he was asking about Joseph Smith, about Jesus. He said, where did you said Jesus came back to life? And I said, yeah, he did. He said, where did he go? Is he still here? Do, do people talk to him? I said, people do talk to him. Jesus is always with us in a sense. And yeah, he has come back. But does that mean that the second coming has happened? I personally believe that just as the Jews kind of got confused and thought that certain things had to happen, this warrior Jesus was going to come and save them from the Romans because that was their immediate need. I think that we as Christians have made the same mistake when it comes to the second coming. We have this idea that he's just going to show up, there's going to be a millennial reign, it's going to be awesome, and, and everybody's going to be happy. When you look at the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, it all happens in stages. Imagine if Jesus would have been hung on the cross, given up the ghost, and then resurrected himself, pulled himself free off the cross, and walked out in front of everyone. It took time. He spent three days with his physical body in a tomb, and his, his spirit, his soul, elsewhere, preaching the gospel according to First Peter, to those that didn't receive it in this life continue the same mission that he had when he was walking the earth. I think that with the second coming, it's very similar. In Acts, it says that Jesus went up into the clouds and that angels told those there witnessing that just as he went up, he will come back down. And those of us within the Latter-day Saint movement, we know that this has happened. It didn't happen for a group of people. It happened for one young man, Joseph Smith. When he prayed to know the truth, Jesus came down. He ascended. 
and he gave him the truth. A year later, he came back down again to reassure Joseph. You can read about that in the book of Avar. I believe that the reason why there are conflicting stories is because Jesus didn't just come once. Why would he? I believe that that return to the earth to meet with Joseph Smith was the beginning of the second coming. It isn't the full second coming. It isn't the beginning of the millennium. We're not there yet. But I believe that we, as Christians, as Latter-day Saints, have a part to play in the second coming. I believe that Jesus is here. I believe that there are men and women that see him. And I know this to be true because I'm one of them and because I've met many others that have borne their testimony, their witness of seeing Jesus Christ. Just as he came to Paul in the New Testament, he is still coming to men and women now inside and outside of the Latter-day Saint movement. Inside and outside of Christianity itself. I know it sounds crazy to say the people have seen Jesus, but to those people that say it's crazy, how? If you're an atheist, sure, I buy that. But if you're a Christian, particularly a Latter-day Saint, when you say that someone's crazy for saying they saw angels or they saw Jesus, how do you explain the Bible? How do you explain the Book of Mormon? If you are a Latter-day Saint, how do you explain Joseph Smith? How do you explain Oliver Cowdery? I grew up being told that the original apostles, not the ones that started the Brighamite Church, but the original apostles in the School of the Prophets actually saw God the Father and God the Son, that they walked in at certain points during the lectures so that they could be true witnesses. I don't know if that's true or not, because when you read Oliver Cowdery's apostolic charge, it talks about living a life so that you can eventually see Jesus. Maybe that's because new ones were called off the top of my head. I, I don't know the who was called when, as far as the apostles. I haven't really looked into that. Maybe it is true. But why couldn't it be true? Even if it's not, why couldn't it be true? I remember during a lesson when I was younger, we were talking about how we have to be ready right now for the second coming. And someone asked the question, well, it's been 2,000 years. I know we're not supposed to believe he's going to delay his coming, but we also shouldn't believe he's going to come tomorrow either. At this point, we just don't know. So what's the point in preparing? And I was that guy. I immediately raised my hand and said, just because Jesus isn't coming tomorrow doesn't mean you're not going to go meet him tomorrow. So maybe you should be ready just in case either way. That's very personal. That's very individual. Very individualistic. In the Latter-day Saint movement, not in all sects, but in a number of our sects, we believe in this idea of sealing families together forever that we get to heaven together. It isn't an individual thing. We're supposed to be like Zion. We're supposed to come together as Latter-day Saints and create this city, this idea. And there are so many people that ask me, Dave, what are we doing? How are we building Zion? Where are we going to build Zion? And I always answer the same way. We have to build Zion in our hearts first. Because otherwise, we're just building yet another organization of men. If we can be truly converted to the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we are preparing the earth for the second coming, for the completion of the creation, as we allow the light of Christ to shine forth from us. That's an important mission. It's an important thing to understand. 
That's one of the reasons why we don't push missionary work in the fellowship. Our missionary work is coming to Christ ourselves and letting that light shine. Those that see the light will come. They'll ask questions. Like moths to the flame. We're to be candles on a hill. Not town criers. So I want you to know that what we're doing here in the fellowship is a part of the second coming. It is a part, I believe, as a part of the restoration of all things in preparing the earth for the heavens. I want you to see angels. I want you to have such a personal relationship with God that you get to meet him, feel the wounds, and have an apostolic witness that Jesus truly is the Christ, that he has risen. The more of us that know this truth in a special way, the harder it becomes for Satan to hide this reality from the world. I do believe that we are building Zion. One soul at a time as we help these people with spiritual PTSD. When we help find and make homes for the spiritually homeless. We have people now that are working diligently to bring these things to pass. As people are reaching out to us, we have more people that are reaching back out to them. And that is a part of the second coming. No one person can do this alone. We are here for you. And as more people are healed and heed their callings from the Lord, there's more people here to be there for you. We can get into all kinds of stuff about the second coming. We can talk about the book of Revelation. We can talk about the visions and parables of Zenos. We can talk about Daniel. We can talk about Isaiah. We can talk about Matthew 25, 24 and 25. We can talk about all kinds of scriptures. But what I want to talk about today, this Advent Sunday, this first Sunday in Advent, is your heart. It's my heart. Let's prepare ourselves to be witnesses of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's prepare ourselves to build Zion physically here upon the earth by helping one another grow in Christ and build Zion inside of ourselves so that the Zion that we build here upon the earth will be a reflection of the Zion that is in our hearts. That's my message for you this Sabbath. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're now going to take a moment to partake of the Sacrament of Communion. I'm going to play a recording of myself reading the Statement on Communion for the Fellowship. And then Christine is going to offer both the prayer for the bread and the prayer for the wine or water. If you would like to participate, please pause the video if you don't already have bread and wine or water out so that they can be blessed. And afterwards, after she has read these prayers, please pause the video. Partake of the sacrament. Take a moment to meditate on the reality of Jesus Christ to build your relationship a little bit stronger with God. And then we will conclude from there. This time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. 
We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's word, the sacrament, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of Thy Son, and witness unto Thee, O oh God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. I want to thank you for being with us today, particularly if you're still with us. According to the YouTube statistics, I know a lot of people seem to leave as soon as we get to the sacrament. So... Thank you. Before I offer a closing prayer, I, I want to make my request one more time. If you find these videos helpful, if you feel a testimony of the work the Lord has called us to do here in the fellowship, please like, please share. Please get involved. And if you have the financial resources, please give. We can use your support on all fronts. We will do our best to be here for you. Regardless of what you can or cannot, will or will not do or give. Because this work that we're doing is for the Lord. And because of that, it cannot and it will not go away. I want to bear you my testimony that when I die, the Lord will call someone else to take over this work. This is not a temporary thing. This is not a theological debate. <coughs> Excuse me. This is not a theological debate club. It is not anything of man. And so because of that, it will continue. Satan cannot stop that which God builds. Satan cannot destroy that which the Lord creates. If the Latter-day Saint movement, if the world is not ready for this now, please know that when I'm gone, the Lord will just call somebody else to take over. And this will move forward in Christ because this is the fellowship of Christ. So, Please help out however you can. Please give however you can. And please know that we're not going anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and offer a closing prayer. Elam Shaddai, 
We bow our heads at this time to thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for the Torah that you've given us through your servant Moses. We thank you for the life, teachings, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for Joseph Smith and the other prophets and prophetesses of the Restoration that have gotten us in this day and age to where we are as Latter-day Saints, as a movement, and as a fellowship. We thank you for this opportunity that we have this month, this coming month, to celebrate Jesus Christ, his birth, the fact that the Creator, the very Word of God, came into this world to walk among us and live the life that would teach us the true meaning of the law, of the Torah, the love of God itself, the love God has that you have, that Jesus has for this creation. It's difficult to try to measure up when we compare ourselves to Jesus. The love that he has for us, his willingness to suffer humiliation, physical pain, and death, to know that he was born an innocent baby only to die an innocent man. We are thankful for his willingness to come here and live among us. We're thankful for his grace and his atonement to make up for our weaknesses as we do not have the strength to live the life that he lived. We thank you for the gospel in its simplicity and in its complexity. The opportunity you've given us to worship and to serve and to love one another. Please help us to open our hearts, open our minds, open our spirits, that our souls, as we grow in Christ, as we grow in the grace of Jesus Christ, that we will feel and exemplify the love that you have, the Father and the Mother, that has been expressed through your Son, Jesus Christ. Please help us this giving season to see those in need and with the ability to give generously, however it is required, to help bless the lives of those that need us. Help us to stop making excuses for those that need help and to open our hearts and just help. Bless us to see past the commercialism that is the Christmas season. Help us to see past our selfish wants to receive and open our hearts with a desire to give. Help us to receive generously that we may bless the lives of the givers. Help us to give generously so that we may bless the lives of the receivers. Help us to be there for one another 
both as we stand in need and as we stand in joy. Help us to learn from one another and to share in the love of Christ as fellow Latter-day Saints and Christians and help us to be the example to the world of what it looks like when we love those that would hate us, use us, persecute us. Bless us that we will rise to be the creation that you desire us to be and not fall prey to despair in victimization. Please bless us with the strength that we need to move this work that you've called us to forward at whatever level you've called us to respond to your challenges. Help us to be the people that you need us to be. Help us to be Israel. Help us to be one in the name of Jesus Christ. These things we ask and we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. So mote it be. Amen.